Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time I'm looking at a four slot MVS. Um, so you can see it's in pretty dirty state here. Um, I'll need to clean this up before I do much with it, I think. Um, it's got a lot of dust and soot and stuff. You can see it here smeared across the board. I'm not sure if we've got some scratches there. We might have a problem with some of the slots. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm not sure if we've got all the screws as well. It looks like we've got some screws missing. You can see one or two of the screws here in uh, a couple of the slots, but all the others have not got any screws, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, and it's the same with some of the, scr uh, the screws that hold the interconnects. You know, I've removed, I think there were three. I had two on this side and one over the other side, but um, yeah, so it might have some screws missing as well. But if I switch this on now, uh, point you at the screen, you can find the power. Oh, right. So we're getting VRAM error there, video RAM error, address 8000. Uh, it's written 5555 and it's read back FFCF, um, which is a bit odd. Um, so there could be a problem with the main graphics chip on here. It's using one of the old, it's the old chips at this from the first gen AES, um, like a Pro B0, C0, etc. I'll show you that in a minute when we have a close look at the board. But um, yeah. It looks like it's either, let's say, a problem with the video RAM or one of those chips. I hope it is just the video RAM. Um, it doesn't look like it's been worked on this. I've had a quick inspection. FFCF, yeah, that address just occasionally, not the address, but the actual value occasionally changes. Um, it seems to be pretty much stuck on FFCF now, though. So, with the SMK DAM uh, BIOS, you can see there, it's coming about VRAM data. Um, address 8000 actual BFCF. Not sure what's going on there. I think before it was something like FFBF or something, wasn't it? So uh, that's strange in its own right. The difference between the two different BIOS is that. Um, but yeah, I'll ha have a look at that information now on SMK Dan's website. Just to try and understand um, which chip we're looking at. The address is going to be the clue there, I think, the 8000 address. Um, it could be the long, two long, thin chips. Um, they're very common to fail on these systems. So I think we'll remove these two SROMs here and I'll socket them up. Um, now these are longer, these are the, eight, uh, the, the 6 4 versions, these are the 16 versions. I'm just wondering if these are like four times the size and it's something to do with it being a four slot and why you would need one's four times the size. I'm not sure. It may well be that some of the space in there is just not used um, and that's the type of chips they, they, did, they went for on this particular board. But if I zoom out a little bit, you can see it's still got the original battery on here as well but there's no signs of corrosion but I will remove that as well whilst I'm here. So there we go, that's one chip off. Um, I'll perhaps just show you quickly on the next one uh, what's required but I'm not, I won't show you the full thing, I'm just using my desolder station here just to help um, with this and it, it's probably a better idea because it's temperature controlled and these boards you do need a, a bit more heat uh, but not too much heat because they're very very small pads um, but if you don't use something higher than the 15 watt sort of INA you typically use, the heat doesn't transfer through um, properly, and it can be then difficult, you know, to get it to desolder on the top side. But uh, yeah, no damage at all to that chip. So, so you can see you've got the chip socketed there now. Uh, I've had to join two sockets up, two uh, 14 pin sockets. So we'll get the other chip off there now. Um, I'll show you a little bit. I'll just desolder a few of the pins just so you can see what's involved um, and then I'll show you how to free up the pins to make sure you don't damage the board um, but yeah we'll, we'll then you know once that's socketed up we'll then swap them around just to see if the behavior changes so I've just going through these pins now with a bit of solder flux using the desoldering station here um, you could use a desolder pump but it doesn't work as well on a board like this I find um, I guess it's all about temperature of your iron really if you get your iron set to the right temperature you're probably alright I'll just give you a close up if I can. Uh, I'll just move the camera around a little bit. Uh, sorry, I'll put my finger there just for reference. Uh, yeah, so hopefully you can see most of the solder, if not all of it, is removed from there. So once I've finished that chip, I'll show you the best way to free it up from the board. So once you think you've got most of the solder off, the technique I use um, more often than not actually now is to put the, the pliers like this and just grab three or four pins at once and just give them a little wiggle, almost so it's like pivoting on the centre. Um, that side might need doing a bit more. When it's right you can actually hear them snap. See what a few snap there then. 
you've got to be careful because obviously you don't want to manage to damage the PCB but if you repeat this a couple of times and just really gently you don't want to move more than a you know I don't know a de degree or two when you are tilting it like this most of them will come off um, and obviously you need to inspect the other side of the board here as well just to see if the you know if they're freed up or not down there so when they're being persistent buggers and even though you've freed up you know you can see you've got most of the solder off there and you've wiggled the pins sometimes what you can do is just use a little flat blade like this and just push into the pin a little bit until you hear a, a little snap and I've just done this with this side actually and if I just carefully now just just try and wiggle this and wiggling it like this is sometimes a good idea as well because once you can wiggle it you can see it moving freely like that it's a safe bet that most of the pins are off and you've just got to just keep inspecting um, I don't know, you can see down there, pretty free, most of the solder's off, um, but the, the, do the wiggle test, if it starts to wiggle you know it's pretty much free and then it is just a case of putting a flat blade screwdriver or something just underneath, don't lever it, just try and lift it, can you see it's just coming off on that end there, um, and then do the opposite, same on the opposite side, just be mindful of that, you might have a pet pin still caught somewhere, the last thing you want to do is pull it if there's any resistance, but if there isn't, like there is here, that's just come straight off as you can see, no issues at all. Uh, I'll need to straighten the pins up because one or two of these I have pressed in just a slight, you know, slightly, like I say, to make it snap off. Um, but yeah, that's not too bad actually. Uh, clean that chip up. The other chip needs cleaning up as well. There's still a bit of solder on the, the pins actually. I just stuck it straight in the socket. But yeah, we'll just clean that up now and get the socket on there and we'll retest with the chips swapped around. Well, what is interesting, these are not the right chips. These are the pallet ram chips, um, and I know that because if you remove one, it fails on the pallet ram check. Um, and the address, uh, you know, not the address, but the the data, uh, the word that's come back is exactly the same, even after swapping these chips around. But it was only after removing one of them just to see what happened and realizing we're getting a pallet error. Um, you know, it's stuck on the pallet test. You can see the screen, you know, the text changes color like it's doing, trying to do a pallet test there. This is the pallet ram, so this is it's a bit different from some of the other MVS boards where the long, thin chips are actually used for the, um, the fast VRAM. Um, I think typically some of these type chips are used for the pallet on the, the other one, but that would seem to be the case. So I'm going to go with these two here because they're right next to the LSPC A0, which is the graphics chip. Um, you can see, you know, the bus coming across here. So uh, I suspect these. So I'm just going to heat the hot, you know, get the hot air on there, remove both of these, and put a couple of new chips on there, and we'll give that a try. Well, you know what? I am a complete muppet. Seriously, these two are the pallet ram chips. Um, when the area didn't change, I shouldn't have just gone away and replaced these two, uh, four, two four, well, this is the mark, four, three, two, five, sixes, they're actually six, two, two, five, sixes, or four, three, two, five, sixes, four, two, five, sixes, depending on um, what equivalent part you get there, but that's going to have nothing to do with this at all, and that should have been blatantly obvious to me. Um, just a little bit more inspection here, you can see if you clean away some of the muck, you can actually see we've got two, five, eight, one, fours there. So there we go, that's what I was looking for right from the start, and I homed down on these, thinking that's what those were, um, but clearly it's not, these, like I say, these are the pallets, pallet ram, um, so that's what I now need to remove and sock it up. These two chips, um, I'll clean this up in a minute, it looks a bit of a mess, but it, it, trust me it's not, it's just flux. These two chips have certainly been around the world, <laughs> I think they've both been on the, SNES, on the SNES boards, as I've been testing those various SNES boards uh, at various points in time. And then they came off there, went onto the PC engine, <laughs> and then came off the PC engine and have gone onto here. I think one of them originally came from an MVS and the other one was a brand new 62256. So, yeah, they've certainly travelled a little bit. I could swap them back for the original chips, but I'm tempted to just leave them on there, to be fair. I can't, honestly can't be bothered removing them again, and there's risk and all the rest of it are damaging it. But, yeah, now I will remove those chips just like I did before and get some more sockets on there and swap them around. Um, and, and I think I've got some replacements for these as well, so... Oh, if I'd only been thinking straight and just following logic, you know, I wouldn't have made all these cock-ups, but, I mean, nothing's been damaged or lost here, I guess, other than my time. Um, it's just because I'm rushing this evening, trying to get this done, it's like, you know, last thing before the weekend, and uh, I've just got an hour or so to try and do this, well, it's leaked in over an hour now. Um, yeah, we'll get these off, I'll report back in a minute. Well, as you might have gathered, I was a bit tired last night when I was trying to do this, I only had a couple of hours of sunlight left, so, um, yeah, we've got the SRAMs on there now. I had some fun and games actually. Um, 
got the, you know, the two original ones are on there and I had two replacements. One of the replacements doesn't work. It's um, I think it reads but it doesn't write or something like that. This It's bizarre the problem with it. And the other two have got other problems. I think one of them's got like, problems at certain addresses and things. And I think the other one's got the inverse of the the one with the right problem. I think it's a problem with it reading. So yeah, three different SRAMs faulty there. Um, but I've got a spare, one of my spares boards actually, and I've ordered a replacement. Um, I've had to remove the backup battery. The next thing he was doing is giving me a backup battery error. Well, not the battery error, a back, backup RAM error. Um, but I've, after removing the battery there, there's no real corrosion. I don't know if you can see, I'll show you closer up in a minute when I've cleaned the board up, because <coughs> it's in a state at the moment, this board is really dirty. Um, but I think I just caught that in time, there was just a tiny bit of corrosion around the actual terminals. Um, and just these traces here just look a little bit darker than they should do, so maybe we've got a bit of corrosion damage there. But actually, if I power this on for you on the screen, you'll see all tests passed. So, um, and the other interesting thing, obviously, is that this is running without the top board. You know, it's not got the connectors. Um, so I'll put the top board on there now, and we'll see what state the top board's in once I get four different carts in. As you can see, I've got four games in here now, so, uh, and it's powered up. It's gone straight to top players golf, so presumably the first slot's not working correctly. I'm not sure. It could just be dirty connection. Um, let's press select. Ah, oh, there we go. So it's gone into Fatal Fury. Not sure. What's that one? I think two of the slots are not, so they're not being picked up at the moment. Top players. Yeah, so I think I'll just try reseating them. So after reseating the uh, Art of Fighting, you can see it has detected that. Okay. I've um, got no sound at the moment because I've got no sound connected up to the super gun here. I'll have to try and think of something to do in a minute to get that sound working. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting cold. I'm ready to recap in. Uh, so let's press select. Top players golf. Select again. Fail Fury. Select again. Puzzle Bobble. So, yeah, it would appear that, uh, yeah, this works fine. There's no problems at all there. Uh, so, not a bad pickup really. Um, I'll clean the board up and I'll show you once I've cleaned it all up. Um, and I'll perhaps do some tests with sound after so you can hear it working. Um, but that was a really good pickup actually. It was something like £12 for the MVS with £16 shipping, uh, which ain't bad really. Um, it's just really dirty. Um, I mean, I'm kicking myself really that I replaced four chips yesterday that were just not what I needed to do. I just was, you know, it's just one of those things. Sometimes I'm a bit like that, especially with my health as it is. At the end of the day there, um, uh, you know, I'd be working all day, so I, uh, it was pretty tired by the time I came to look at this. Um, a bit of a bull in the china shop, really, but at least it didn't damage anything. It's just uh, replaced things I didn't need doing. Um, I knew right from the start what needed to be done. I just, I don't know, I didn't inspect the board thoroughly enough, otherwise I would have spotted where the chips were and got it right first time. Um, anyway, I'll clean this up now and uh, get some speakers or something attached and just give you uh, a close look, close look at the board, really. We'll have a, a scan around it just so you can see some of the components are on here because they're pretty beefy boards, these. There's a lot to them. So there's many ways to go about cleaning uh, something like this, but it is a very large board, actually. So I'm just going to go around initially with uh, some paper towel, actually, with ICE IPA and just go over the main areas that I can on the PCB, you can see uh, it's pretty dirty actually, and the tops of the chips. Um, if I do this first and then I can go over with cotton buds and a, a brush and some, you know, run some IPA over it and stuff to get under the chips and around the connections, but as you can see that's probably going to be the best approach because it is so large and so much dirt on here. Well I made some progress but this is going to take ages to clean, seriously. Uh, there's that much, um, you know, that many small nooks and crannies and that many areas here that um, are just filthy. I mean, look at the combo there, it's, it's just absolutely filthy. This is the sort of thing that needs like almost power washing or, you know, sticking in a, uh, a dishwasher or something. Certainly some sort of ultrasonic bath, you know, but you need quite a large um, volume bath to be able to accommodate the size of this damn thing. Um, one of the nice things with these boards, and the two slots and things as well, um, and six slots I guess, uh, one of the reasons why people tend to go for these for consolization is you've got the um, joystick ports here, 
Uh, and then you've also got sound, you know, like headphone, line out, and then separate volume sliders for the line out and headphones. Um, you've also got your memory card uh, readers, you know, you need, you need like a, a cable that comes off and adapters, that's what I think those are for. Um, might be other things as well, I think they might have the credit displays and things coming off those, or it might be these, I'm not sure. These, uh, I'm not really sure. I need to look at the um, service manual for this. But, um, yeah, the other interesting thing, you know, thinking about uh, this one, cleaning this up, as I was, uh, it st starts to dawn on me, you know, how many people have probably played this system uh, at some point in its life. Uh, you know, there's a history behind it. I wonder where it's been, I wonder which arcade. Um, or pub or wherever this was located. Um, it's a shame we'll never know really but... So here's a quick update so you can see how I'm getting on. Uh, it's looking a lot cleaner. There's lots lots of dirty patches, you know, you can see lots of areas like that. I mean, look how dirty that is down there. Uh, lots of the bits around the offshoots of the chips and things and around the caps. It's very very difficult to clean this. But you might be wondering why, what are the benefits of doing this? Well, there are a few things actually you can spot. Can you see here? Can we got some like dull pins there on those the four or five pins on the uh, I think that's backup RAM um, so that needs reflowing um, and then I did test briefly before with uh, see if it could get some sound and there's no sound coming out of this at all and no errors uh, can you see here we've got like a hopefully you might be able to see that it's like zoom, zoom in a little bit um, it's like a bit of corrosion's got on there maybe we've got a burnt out trace there going to the 3016 I'm not sure or something around the sound circuitry there. But that's the sort of thing you only spot when you clean off all the surface contaminants and things. Um, so there's a few, just two or three points like that I've spotted and thought, ah, oh, okay, could be a problem there. Um, the backup RAM, um, as I don't know if I showed, but it was given a backup RAM error before and then removed the battery and it was all right. So there's a chance that chip might need replacing and it could even just be bad connectivity there, but there's certainly no corrosion around here at all. Um, it's just, I don't know, where moisture, I think, has gone there in those two different locations. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm nearly done now. I'm not going to get this perfect. I just want to get most of the dirt off it so that it's, you know, it's clean to handle and stuff. You don't get black hands every time you touch the damn board. The audio side here might need recapping. I'm not sure. But I think I'm going to inspect that trace next just to see if there's any damage there. Uh, maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe that's why there's no sound coming out of this. But other than that, I think it's probably going to need a recap to get the sound working. Just to show you the contrast, actually, of how bad this is, look at the dirt that's come off. Can you see I've just done the gaps in between? Um, look at the edge pieces, it's just absolutely filthy. So, looking a lot cleaner there now, all four slots properly, um, and it is going through the different demo. Uh, if I just turn up the volume on these headphones, you might be able to hear it, just bear with me. And if it selects, let's just, sorry, I'm knocking the camera here. Bubble, puzzle bobble, I think. Top players golf. Uh, art of fighting, I think. Hopefully, this, you can hear the sound. It's not very loud because it's going through headphones here. So, the sound's a bit noisy. Um, the headphone output is not working, I don't think. So, I think you just need a cap kit. So, I might cover that on a following video, I think. Um, I'll perhaps just reassemble it all now um, and just show you it reassembled. The metal case is not in a great state, it perhaps just needs sanding down and respraying. Um, so I might consoleize this, I think that's probably what I'm going to try and do with it. Um, and I think more cleaning is actually required on the board here, but anyway, I'll just get it all back together and show you the end result. So we'll just have a quick look over the board here now. Um, it's not 100% clean, but it's as clean as I want to get it for the moment. Uh, so you can see we've got the Yamaha, oh, sorry, off camera, uh, Yamaha 2610 here. The sound circuitry seems to be in this corner here. You've got Z80. Um, there's the ROM for the Z80. Sorry, Z80, ROM for the Z80. Uh, supporting logic, I think, around here. Uh, I've got a 732 there. Um, that's the RAM for the Z80, 6116. Um, some two four fours and two four fives down here. Um, audio output section. So you got your stereo. I think it's stereo amplifier on here. Um, your volume sliders. One for your headphones. One for your speaker. Uh, I think that's probably sound output. I'm not sure. And then you've got uh, line out. Or, you know, sorry, not line out. Uh, amplified sound out and headphones out. Um, so a pallet ram, uh, which I previously swapped out by accident, uh, dough, yeah. Um, 
got the nice old chips out here, the Pro B0, Pro C0 and LSPCA0. Uh, up here uh, you've got a Pro CT0. I don't remember seeing one of those before on my old AES. Um, interesting thing, we've got a couple of sockets here. Not sure what that's all about. What what those can be used for. The marked uh, SC1 and SC2 and the chip types seem to be 531024. Uh, so yeah, put some comments below if you know anything about that. And then you've got the fixed ROM here. Um, which I don't think you get on an AES, uh, could be wrong. Um, what else have we got? ROM up here, I think. Uh, supporting logic, lots of supporting logic. There's going to be more supporting logic on this because of the obviously the multiple car uh, capability. You know, the fact it's got four car slots, and then we've probably got backup RAM, work RAM. Uh, I could have those around the wrong way. And then I think this is video RAM, as I showed very early on in this video, it's connected to the LSPC. A0 here, so yeah, that's VRAM as well, the third type of VRAM, there's three lots on here, and then the VRAM's obviously that were the faults here um, at the 8000 address. Um, that's like I say, that's what I was looking for right from the start, It's just it was just a bit of a stupidity um, on my part really. Um, and then the back, backup area here, um, well the backup RAM's probably down here, and then you've got the support and logic, it's probably a 74HC32 somewhere around here or something, I can't see it for now. Um, and then obviously the cart um, connections here, and I think this is probably not just the cart stuff, it's probably the um, LED um, for player one, player two as well, because I think on some of these um, larger boards, you know, multi-slot boards, you've got some facility there to drive like a little uh, LED display or something for the number of credits, I think. So that's probably what those are. It could be these, I'm not sure, because you've got three connectors up here on the side as well. I'd need to see the, the, the manual for this. Um, uh, and the clock, clock uh, crystal oscillator down here uh, and obviously you've got the one for the battery as well for the real sound clock um, so yeah there's not much more to cover on this particular board obviously you've got your joystick ports back here and there's loads of these interconnects at various places, there's four of them I think in total um, that join your top board to your bottom board um, there's very little on the underside if I show you it's just connectivity, you know, uh, solder points and things I don't even think there's a single component um, and there's your battery the flat thing, you know, you need to lift this to be able to solder your battery. Um, I'll just give you a quick look at the top board. So looking at the top side of the board here now, um, after I've reassembled it, uh, you've not got much going on really, just the four slots um, and then a load of 74 logic. Um, on both sides of this, it's mostly 244s and 245s, which is what you'd expect really for, you know, switching between the different slots here. Um, you know, sort of buffers and tri-state latches, etc. There are some other chips on here, like a 7474 7 there, I think. Uh, 253s, I don't know what they are. We might have some multiplexes or demuxes or something going on as well. Um, so one of the things I've done here, it only came with three screws for these interconnect pieces here. So I've put one there, uh, one here, and one over there. But then I've replaced the screws for the corners because um, they were chewed up. In fact, I only had two screws for the corners, so I've now replace that with four, I've got four proper screws there um, and I moved, if you remember at the beginning of the video I think it was down here, I had one there and one here um, and those go through, I don't know if you can see, the underneath and join them up so what I've done is put one there and then one there so they're in the middle, if I sort of zoom out a bit you can see they're in that position there to support it, you know, the, so the centre of the board's got good strength um, because it's supported from the, bot, the, you know, the top side and then the other thing I've done is I didn't have all these feet, I only came with three I think so I've stuck two in the middle to again help support the the, the strength there in the middle of the board um, and got one in each corner of the four sides there so yeah overall it's pretty good it could perhaps just do with um, I could do with getting some of these here these little standoffs um, and sticking uh, where's it go uh, yeah there's one up here that's missing so I could do with that um, really just to give it a bit of support there because it's you know it's not too bad I guess there's certainly lots of strength in the middle and along the side here um, but yeah that's not so bad I'll get the metal uh, cover back on you can see um, what state that's in it, it does need respraying or something I think really but um, the other good thing with this is it's got the original seal number of in there um, S and K original seal um, and some sort of interesting uh, protection thing down here AAMA protect with a seal number, so I'm not sure what that's all about, whether that was something they shipped with or whether it's a warranty seal from some place that's looked at this board in the past, no idea. So there you go, you can see the shielding um, 
it's not too bad. It, it just needs, I think, maybe respraying. I don't know. But I mean, all the original labels are intact on here, you know, including the numbers for the slots and things. So I might just leave it as it is for the moment. But I think ultimately I might just um, remove the stickers and things and then um, maybe take it to a car body shop or something, get them to um, professionally spray it. I don't know, black or red or something like a glossy red or a glossy black. Um, and then I guess just need to handle power and video and stuff. Um, it's nice, like I said, that this has got the controller. Uh, where the hell is it? It's on the back, actually. Uh, well, uh, yeah, this is the thing. You probably need to rearrange uh, which way around you have the thing. I don't know. Uh, might make more sense to have this as the front because the controller ports are here. Um, then you've got your headphone and volume and master volume on the back. Um, yeah, that might be the best way to have it. Um, so I might stick uh, some sort of video connector or something coming out of this side here, out of the shielding. Uh, obviously you need to cut a hole or something that might be interesting. Um, might be able to get the car place to do it at the same time. But um, Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.